Hey everybody, Jamin here from Game Show with another weekly thought. Um, so you might have seen the news this week that Eurogamer, um, which is a pretty well-respected and esteemed uh, purveyor of video game writing, decided this week that they no longer wanted to publish review scores that would be attached to their stories. Uh, I believe Joystick, which is now defunct, um, also made a similar decision sometime last year. And Eurogamer's rationale was um, a couple fold. One was that the nature of games had changed, which I totally understand, um, but also that they felt like uh, the Metacritic system sort of distilled their review scores and then used them against the video game industry. Um, I'll link to a Wall Street Journal story from a couple years ago that shows to, shows the uh, the influence that Metacritic often had over people receiving bonuses, et cetera, et cetera. It's often used to sort of dictate whether or not a game was successful or uh, was successful or not. I mean, one other big reason that Eurogamer sort of decided not to do review scores was this idea that um, was that a review score was uh, was reductive at some level that sort of took the nuance and complexity of games and distilled everything down to a score. Um, I think this goes back to this thing um, which I talked about earlier in a previous uh, a previous note about what the purpose of criticism actually is. And there's two different ways that you can look at it. On the one hand, if you think that the purpose of criticism is to um, is to get people to sell uh, or to purchase a particular product, then that's going to lead you in one in one direction. So you know, a lot of times, like TV critics or um, other critics at basically local dailies, for example, uh, local daily newspapers, their job was to sort of give a thumbs up, thumbs down, on whether or not you should purchase something. But there's another way to think about criticism, which is to sort of couch it in more cultural language. But the purpose of criticism is to um, basically to take a piece, a work, or whatever it might be, place it in context, and engage with the argument that it's making to sort of evaluate its validity or not. Um, from that point of view, it doesn't really matter whether or not something is critically acclaimed and sells or vice versa. The role of criticism from that perspective is much more about um, helping readers think through um, the argument that a particular piece might lay out. So I think the, the point being is that regardless of whether or not you have review scores, there's, um, there's always a system that you have in place, um, whether it's explicit or uh, implicit. With Eurogamer, for example, they're moving to a three-tiered system that's always recommended or avoid. Uh, I believe Kotaku kind of has a simple yes or no. Um, you know, kill screen, we have, we still stick to the number system, for example. But the point being is that there's always some kind of system of evaluation. So this question about whether or not review scores um, sort of reduce the complexity and nuance of a particular game is sort of besides the point. Um, simply because, you know, sort of criticism or writing about something in another medium that in and of itself is a reductive act because it's not the thing itself. Um, so, you know, I, I think this idea that your grandma thinks, thinks that they're getting away from um, getting away from some sort of reductive system I don't think is necessarily true. Just the act of writing sort of forces you into that particular corner. Um, regardless, I think that also a lot of the back, uh, sort of the back dialogue about sort of rebelling against Metacritic, for example, because it's um, instilling bad values in the video game industry is totally disconnected from what the purpose of criticism actually actually is. Remember, the point of criticism, I think, is not to help people um, make purchasing decisions or to um, help game makers sell games or whatever, and that's what Metacritic is for. So if you know the video game industry has decided to use that as a benchmark for excellence, that's the video game industry's problem, not necessarily the, the role of critics. Um, so, but at the end of the day, I think ultimately what really matters is um, whether or not the writing itself will, will improve uh, in terms of writing about games. You can have any kind of system that you want, but if the the writing, or if you're doing, um, you know, video video criti if you're doing video criticism, for example, if the arguments that are being made don't have more complexity, then it's not really much different than having the uh, game pro. Game Pro dude, if you for those of you who remember that. In any case, I'd love to know what you think. Um, obviously, you know, video crit video game criticism is something we sort of all engage in on a daily basis, and it's nice to see people are sort of having conversations about the nature of what that is. But I'd love to know what you think, and I will see you all in a bit.